to joinrival.com slash box office QBs to sign up right now and you'll be able to bet against your friends, play fantasy bingo and fantasy games all year round with multiple sports. Again, this joinrival.com slash box office QBs and with your first deposit of up to $200, it will be matched. You'll also get a $25 in free play and a $10 free play voucher. Welcome into another edition of Box Office Quarterbacks, our first Marvel themed show of 2024. Today, me and my friend Gerald are talking about Echo, the new Disney Plus and Hulu series that dropped um, about a few days ago as we're recording this. It is Marvel's first Marvel Spotlight bannered show. It's mature. It is a throwback kind of to the Netflix Marvel era of uh, of the MCU. I dug it. Gerald, what are your initial initial thoughts here? I I loved it. I mean, and I'm going to get in more into my actual full, obviously, um, rating later. And I'm not going to it's it's going to surprise you compared to what I just said. But at the same time, I I did love it. Um, And I think this show is going to be a victim of kind of maybe that Marvel fatigue we've all talked about. And I can't wait to get into that with the show. Yeah, I do think that too. Uh, You you know, this is a different release schedule than we're used to with Marvel. We just were coming off. What if where uh, we got an episode released every single day, like leading up uh, like past Christmas and almost to the new year. This is five episodes dropped at once uh, almost unceremoniously And I think that for whatever reason, uh, the executives at Disney or Marvel or whoever lost faith in this show. But I think that they did this a huge disservice because this show is great. The acting is great. The the character of Echo, I think, is one of the most unique characters in the MCU. And honestly, like when she was introduced in Hawkeye, um, they didn't really flesh out her backstory. You get it here, and it really does work in the grand scheme of things. Look, one thing I want to hit on is like, first off, the one of the major complaints about the MCU after the first four phases was that, like, why the hell does everything happen in New York? And for once, we get an entire series set in freaking Oklahoma. And I still get people complaining about it because it's not good enough. And I I don't understand why they're saying that. Because like you said, the the acting's great. I love all the stuff about the Choctaw Nation when they dive into that. Um, Just the family. um, Some of the family stuff could have been a little stronger, I'm sure. Um, But when you only have a select few episodes, there's only so much you can do. And as for the release format, it it is a little weird because I, I am... I was actually kind of on board with the way Marvel and other companies have been doing it as of late, where instead of releasing all of it for you to binge, you get one a week. Because when you do that, you enable social media and podcasts like ours to not just do a full season recap. It's going to become a weekly recap or a bi-weekly recap, et cetera. It's going to be talked about for months on end or however long your show is running compared to just dropping it all at once like they did here. However... I also think that they may have done that just because they didn't want people to forget about it because it is a lesser known character. This isn't Spider-Man. This isn't Nick Fury. This isn't Loki. You know, like this isn't one of those characters that already has 15 years of evolution and history built up in it. It's Echo who has so far only shown up in one thing and the actress Alakwa Fox, all praise to her. She's amazing, but this is really her first ever project other than Hawkeye, because she hasn't done anything else, at least according to her IMDb page. Yeah, and she is a great actress. Like For this being her second project, and you also have a really strong supporting cast. If anybody watched the show Reservation Dogs on FX, there's a lot of actors that cross over into this series. Uh, Devery Jacobs, uh, who plays Bonnie in this series, is the main character in Reservation Dogs, and she is great here. You have uh, the grandma and grandpa, I thought, were just really fun characters. I loved Biscuits, the cousin, uh, especially the part when he's trying to sell his PS4 to fix his grandma's truck. Uh, That was hilarious. Uh, It's charming, this show. Uh, It's dark. It is gritty, but there are such charming characters here that I think 
really makes this stand out. And we haven't even gotten to the, the kingpin aspect of all of this. No, yeah, we haven't. And and it is a gritty show. I think they could have probably gone a little further with it at times, but they they definitely do it more than what you've ever seen in the MCU. And in fact, in episode one, I want to say there might be one of my favorite MCU fights. Um, so like there's there's a lot of great stuff in this and I just don't understand. Um, side note, one of my favorite Easter eggs, and I know it's not a real Easter egg, it's probably from the Marvel Comics, TBH, but the little swirly thing, that's 100% Naruto Uzumaki. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, she has a swirly thing would... on her hand. I'm going to have to get the picture of it when I edit this later. But it's yeah. it, it, it looks just like the the thing. But um, the, the whole, back to the show, it's, it, it was great and it, and it was fun. And I think this is becoming a victim of just kind of the Marvel fan base is becoming that toxic fanboy club that we all yes. never wanted it to be. It is the club that star Wars used to be. And sometimes still is to be quite frank with you. Um, because I remember like in 2013, 14, you know, you would meet star Wars fans if you were an MCU fan or vice versa. And one or the other would be like, yeah, I don't want to, I hope like our group is bad or, you know, the star Wars fan base has always been so toxic and gatekeeping on stuff. And it, they hate change and they hate new stuff and they hate when anything woke or anything ends up in their projects. And, and I don't think that's at all what the MCU is doing. Is it be more diverse? Yes, but that's honestly what the world looks like. And if that's what Marvel comics have always looked like as well. So if that's your issue, then you're an ignorant bastard. Um, there's no reason to hate on the show. It's not poorly edited. It's got some weird pacing at times, but it's fun. It's got good fighting. Um, and it highlights some people that you don't ever really get to see on TV and media. You get to see the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma and you get, and no, it's not, you know, it's not tit for tat, the perfect adaption, but they worked closely with the Choctaw Nation and they got a lot of good insight, I think, from it. In my opinion, I enjoyed it. And being from Oklahoma myself, from that area of the country, I really enjoyed getting to see my part of the country in a freaking Marvel series and not just the Bronx or New York or World yeah. War II or New Jersey. Like, who the fuck gives a shit about New Jersey? <laughs> Get, like, yeah. So, I mean, it was just, um, I, I really, and I know we've never really hit on that in this podcast before, and maybe I'll have to edit it out. It's just, if that's what you're feeling is that it's, 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 it's too different, then I implore you to expand your boundaries of media and to allow things to be judged after you watch them instead of just looking at the cover. Yes, and I do love that the ASL community was represented here, and I love that the crew and a lot of the cast learned ASL to uh, communicate with Alakwa Cox, and I think that this... Uh, makes the series like more unique. Like mm -hmm. you have uh, a lead in a show that we've never had before. And uh, just her expressions and like her physicality in this role, I think really make it stand out. Mm -hmm. uh, the story itself is uh, Maya Lopez uh, loses her mom uh, right at the beginning of this series, goes to New York to live with her dad. Her dad works for the Kingpin the tracksuit mafia, which was established in Hawkeye. They tie everything back to the Marvel Netflix series, making that canon. I like Vincent D'Onofrio here again. Like he's just perfect in that role. There was one thing I thought was a little cringy. And that's when uh, they gave him the contacts that shows like the ASL signs. Uh, it but, just looked very weird. But side note on that looks weird. Yeah. Things like that, that end up in like TV shows and movies. I always wonder if somebody smart out there is just watching him and is like, you know what? I could probably make that shit. Yes. Could you Kingpin, imagine like, if that was real? Like, <laughs> He didn't even need is. to run for mayor of New York. He could just manufacture these contacts. Manufacture the these world. contacts for freaking ever, right? Yeah. Um, no, yeah. And it, and it was really great. And I, and I love that to play a disabled person, you got somebody with the same disabilities who has learned and grown with them throughout her life. And I, and I think you even get and I, and I loved watching her like even like the way she fought was different with having a prosthetic leg. I don't know if you noticed how she would grab it when she twisted around and just slam yeah. people with that thing. Um, and just like some of the stuff, the little things like that are what makes this show better than what it is. Is it the best Marvel show ever? I, I don't think so. No, no. But I do think, I think it's better than a lot of them. It's better than a lot of them. That's for sure. I just I think that um, 
it's a mixture of a lot of things. Also, just like the standard right now, the standard, we're still trying to compare things to the first four phases. And I think we need to take it and look at it this way. Marvel is releasing shows in between its movies. Now, the movies are meant to be the big bangs. The shows are meant to build up the universe, build up the world, give you history, give you extra characters, give you things to care about other than some big random guy who has 50,000 variants trying to take over the world. Um, you can just worry about one little thing at a time. And I think those those don't need to be rated the same way. You know, an all-star or a starter for one of these shows is completely different than an all-star starter from the movies, correct? Just like, you know, yeah. a three-star ranking is different from everything. So, um, and I think that's what people really need to take into account before watching or reviewing shows like this. And it's not happening enough, especially with Marvel releasing more and more stuff all the time. We are getting very toxic, like you said, in, in the Marvel fan base, which mm -hmm. uh, it reminds me a lot of the DCU Zack Schneider stuff is kind of the territory we're getting. If somebody likes one thing in, in, in this universe, there's 50 other people that tell them they're stupid for liking this thing. Yep. Uh, this show, this show is it's I think it's great. It is not the best Marvel show. It is not Loki level, but it is enjoyable. Um, I think that like Marvel is going on the right path to release more mature stuff. And honestly, this show gave me a lot more hope for Daredevil Born Again when that comes out, because we knew there were problems with that. But I think they can handle characters like Daredevil and the Punisher if they wanted to again. Yeah, and I, I definitely think they can. I <clears throat> I just don't want more five episode seasons. And I get that's where a lot of the money goes into. But if we're going to be doing characters like Echo, like Daredevil, like the Punisher, I'm hoping we... I mean, obviously, we just got one and there was a lot less CGI. If we can get a lot less CGI that brings the budget down, make these 10 to 15 episodes, honestly. Yeah. Um, because I could have watched 10 episodes of this. I binged it in one night. Um, granted, I'm not doing a lot of stuff right now, but I binged it in one night myself. Yeah. Well, let's let's talk about the rating of this show on the box office QB scale. I think I know where we're going, but uh, tell me where you have it, Gerald. I say it's a starter. And I say that as a high starter. It's a great starter. It's more of a 3.5 out of 5 if we had numbers instead of our rating scales. Um, and I think that's because sometimes the pacing is a little weird. And, you know, um, it's too short. I feel like I would much rather have had 8 or 9 episodes instead of, I think, the 5 we got. Um, but there's a lot of great stuff in here, man. There's a lot of great stuff. And every one of those great stuff... Um, probably would make this a five if it was a longer show or a four and a half at least if it was a longer show i just think there wasn't i, I, I wish there was more content and i find that both saying it's a good show proving it's a good show but also proving why it's not as good as it could have been you know yeah i think it's an all-star i really have been wanting more gritty marvel stuff since uh, Daredevil season three, and we haven't got that. We've gotten moments in the movies, but this is everything I've been wanting uh, for a really long time now, and I'm really happy that we're getting it again. Um, five episodes, I think, is too short. I would like to maybe see eight episode seasons. Um, but yeah, I, it, it is a solid start. It's number one on Hulu and on Disney+. Plus. We could potentially get a season two of this show. I think it deserves it. Uh, I think that the character is important in the grand scheme of things because it's uh, representation for indigenous people. It's representation for the ASL community. Um, I have nothing but good things to say here. Yeah. And and I mean, like, like the acting is so good that even the young actress who plays um, a young Maya, uh, my, I'm hoping I'm not saying this wrong, Darnell Besaw, I think is how you say it. But yeah. um, young, she was fantastic. You yes, know, she had so much emotion in every 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 scene she had, and it wasn't a lot, but it was perfect. Um, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. And, and I do think Echo is going to be a huge part. We're we've already known for a minute that Marvel's going to go down a street level super vigilante type path with characters like Daredevil, um, not Iron Fist. God, I hope not Iron Fist. But you know, <laughs> like Jessica yeah. Jones, Echo. Daredevil, and even maybe Spider-Man going into that with Kingpin being that big bad for those core. So I'm yeah. really excited to see what happens next and kind of how she interacts with Spider-Man 
Um, you could definitely see Tom Holland Spider Man trying to learn a little bit of science, ASL yeah. and trying to do it, but also making some funny jokes while he's um swinging around and they're all fighting and making fun of Daredevil and stuff. Yeah, yeah. If we do get a Spider Man four with all these street level characters and Kingpin is the main villain, I'm gonna love the fuck out of that. I will tell you that right yeah. now. Just don't put five different villains in there. Yeah, don't do it. Uh, Scorpion, Kingpin, and somebody else. But uh, yeah, anything else you want to add, Gerald, before we get out of here? I believe so. All right. Well, this has been another edition of Box Office Quarterbacks. Uh, Like and subscribe to our show on YouTube, Spotify, Apple. Uh, Go to joinrival.com slash boxofficeqbs for some fun free play on Rival Fantasy Sports. I am Jeff. That's my friend Gerald. We will talk to you guys very, very soon.